I haven't made a video in a while, and I just finished a nap, so let's talk about it. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's in here, what's going on, what makes it tick, and then I'm going to do a little bit of a demo playing it. Uh, if you don't care about me talking about what's in the amp, you can just uh, skip ahead. There'll be a time link in the description to get straight to there. So this right here is, uh, I think it's putting out about 30 watts, which is a lot for what's in here, but I'll explain that in a second. Um, it has a uh, tube rectified uh, power source. It's a GZ34. And then the power section is a pair of six V6s. And 30 watts is a lot for a pair of six V6s, but it's putting about 500 volts on the anode, so that's how it's getting about there. I didn't test it exactly, but it sounds like it's loud enough to be in there. So the uh, sound comes in, it has uh, two 12AX7 gain stages, and then from there it goes to a Baxen dial, I just kind of cloned the tone stack for um, a bass and treble. And then um, from there it goes into one more 12AU7 gain stage, then a cathodyne phase inverter, and then into the power section. Uh, the power transformer is a uh, allied, I forget the number, it'll be in the description, 6K something, I think, um, which is uh, quite high powered for the price they cost. They're surprisingly cheap for how much power they have, and they're built by Hammond. Um, and then the output transformer is one from a Fender basement, and usually the impedances wouldn't match, but since uh, that's usually only a 2 ohm output, and this is 4 ohm between the speakers, it doubles the impedance, and then it ends up matching the, uh, the output section on there. So. It also has a, a negative feedback loop to the cathodyne, which, and then a presence knob that, that works on that. It doesn't do a whole lot, it's very subtle. Uh, if I were to build it again, I'd probably use just a switch. Um, and then for all the knobs here, they, they go backwards. This was originally going to be a head, but it's a preamp gain, a bass treble, presence, and then a master volume on over there. And the, uh, the master volume is on the, uh, let's see, it's, it's after the phase inverter, after the cathodyne. So it's a post inverter. Um, which it gives you more gain. It sounds a little weird when you get the volume levels way down low, like the bedroom levels, but uh, it gives you more gain anyway. So I think that's nice. Um, the speakers in the back, it has a pair of Jensen 10 inch. They're uh, what are they, 1050, I believe they are. And um, then the whole thing is made out of a half inch MDF. And if I were going to redo it, I'd probably use three quarter inch. It vibrates a little bit. It's not too bad. I've um, certainly seen professionally built ones that vibrate more than this one, so I'm pretty okay with it. Uh, I think it's mostly really good for clean tones, and the, uh, the tone stack works very well for not doing the mid-scoop like the usual three-knob, like Marshall Fender Trainer uh, stacks, um, but it still gives a good amount. It's pretty bass-heavy, um, and I'm probably going to move it off this stand when I actually demo it in a second here. Um, and I think that's, that's about all there is to say about it. I guess I should just play it, huh? All right, now I've got a guitar here. Let's uh, demo this a little bit. So I really like the way this amp sounds for the most part, especially on lower gain settings uh, with single coils. And I can coil tap this. Unfortunately, this room is terribly full of RF interference. So when I do single coil things, I'm going to face this way a bit. It's not because I'm trying to be rude and look away from you. It's because I don't want all that noise in here. So let's start off with a bit of a uh, clean setting on here, if I find the same spot here. Before. I'm repeating myself here. I need to come up with some new things to play. Uh, this can also be very uh, bass heavy. I'm going to pull the bass up all the way just for a moment just to demonstrate that. So if you really want to pin the bass on there, it can, uh, it can get up very high. Uh, that's because just have large coupling caps throughout the whole thing, and then it's got a really beefy output transformer, so it's got a lot to give in that regard. But of course you can pull it back a bit, and then uh, turn it up slightly here on there, and we can get a little bit of a bite out of it. This, this room is fine. It's just, um, there's a big radio tower nearby, and I'm 
it's like an industrial area. I sure I pick up a lot of a uh, hum. So with humbuckers there, we can get a little more bite out of it. Sound a little bit. I don't even know how well it's gonna pick up in this night. 